At level 3, fighters get to choose their subclass. Today I'll be talking about the Battlemaster subclass. Welcome to Pack Tactics. To start off the video, I will quote Sun Tzu's Art of War. Sun Tzu said, Like, comment, and subscribe to Pack Tactics. But Cobalt, he didn't actually say that! Right at level 3, Battlemaster gets two features, one of which will be upgraded over the rest of their career, and will be their main features, so to say. But first, they get Student of War. At third level, you gain proficiency with one type of artisan's tools of your choice. Without the optional rules about tools in Sanathars, this is not too exciting. It's just a bit of fluff. However, if your game does make use of Sanathars, you have all the more reason to put in some extra extra thought about what these proficiencies might allow you to do. Tabletop Builds made an article talking about all the tools in great detail with those rules, which I'll link below, but I'll quickly mention which tools I would look at when playing a battle master. Namely, Mason's tools, Carpenter's tools, Smith's or Tinker's tools, and Cobbler's tools. Kind of in order of most useful to least useful. The first two are useful because they give you advantage to perception and investigation in stone structures and wooden structures respectfully. Which, surprise surprise, is a lot of structures. It is especially nice that this means you get a plus five bonus to those passives for when it comes up. Smiths and Tinker's tools allow you to quickly rack up a sum of money because you can fix the gear of your enemies and sell it off. Lastly, Cobbler's tools allow you to hide away some of what you're carrying in people's shoes. Next up is Combat Superiority. It is THE feature that makes me like this subclass. It basically gives you choices to make for your character besides feats as a marshal. It's a bit too much to go over everything here, so I'll try my best to explain how this feature works. How it changes over time, and what I believe is the best options. It's like picking spells. That's really exciting, I love stuff like that. That is actually a good comparison. You get to pick maneuvers out of a list, which can be used by expending superiority dice. Basically, every maneuver makes you roll a superiority dice, which starts off as a d8 and makes you do something with that number. Every time you get to learn new maneuvers, you get to swap one you have as well. Some maneuvers may require the enemy to roll a saving throw. The DC for that is 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your choice of your strength or dexterity modifier. Right from the get go we get four superiority dice which we get back on any rest even short rests for people new to 5e those are like long rests but instead of being long they're short as for maneuvers, we get three, so obviously we can use the same options multiple times if we wanted to. Both the amount of superiority dice you get and the amount of maneuvers you get to pick will grow in the future. Even the size of the superiority dice increases. Level 15 is a bit special because you don't gain an additional superiority die. You also always get one if you start combat with zero left over. In practice, that just means you always use your last superiority die in combat, even if you don't expect that you'll rest afterwards. It's not insane or anything. Of course, this is not all battle masters get, but I'll finish off everything I want to say about maneuvers until we continue on with the features that aren't related to them. Also, because I might as well, I'll talk about some of the option maneuvers from Tash's. My general advice would be pick the strong strongest combat options first, as you'll have plenty of space later on to pick some you might want to use out of combat. At level 3, I would look at Menacing Attack, Precision Attack, and Trip Attack. Menacing attack is best used against enemies that do not have ranged options while you are at range. If your allies don't walk up to them either, frightened enemies will be stuck without anything to do on their turns. That is pretty good. Precision attack is the I need damage now Nova option. This is a huge amount of damage if you use power attack feats like sharpshooter. Something like menacing attack adds 1d8 damage on a hit. 
For an average of 4.5, precision attack can add about 16.5 if you make a powerful hand crossbow shot hit, which would have barely missed otherwise. That is not to say the secondary effect of menacing is useless. It is really quite useful, but I'm just using it to show how good precision attacks damage is. Just in case you misunderstand me somehow with menacing attack, yes, you add the attack's damage on a hit as well. Final tip, don't use it against targets that don't matter, or when you miss by a lot. Ideally, you use precision attack when you miss by an average of the die, or less. But if you need the damage to survive, you should probably just pump those dice as much as you can. Trip attack is useful to knock creatures out of the sky, but it's all also the most damage efficient option you have. If you hit someone with the first attack on your turn, you can trip them. And if that is successful, you can walk up to 5 feet range and use all your attacks, maybe even with action surge, with everything at advantage. This is also viable for ranged attackers if you have crossbow expert. Be warned though, being within melee range is dangerous, so don't get too greedy with damage. Later on, you have stuff like disarming strike to steal spellcasting focus, or magic items, which may not come up a lot, but the three methods above should be useful in any situation other maneuvers aren't. And rally, which should be used at the start of your day before short resting afterwards for some extra temporary hit points. Ambush allows you to take out targets before they are a problem, like the spellcasters. If you have assassin levels, this will add even more damage. Maneuvering attack can be used to maneuver your allies if needed. At this point, you should take a look at bait and switch and tactical assessment. And if that isn't enough, pushing strike, distracting strike, goading strike, or maybe parry. There are a lot of options that are at least half decent. If you want to see builds you Using some of these features, check out the basic build fighter or gloomstalker ranger flagship from tabletop builds. I'll link them in the comments. Speaking of links, are you struggling with ideas? Well, I've got the tool you need. This video is sponsored by Describe, where you can get professionally written box descriptions of basically everything. Thousands of scenes. They also write on maps, mouse over points of interest, and read them for your players. They do map collabs all the time. I see there are nine new maps available, and you get them if you subscribe. I really like the newest map here called Adventurer's Guild Hall. This is perfect for a quest hub area, and you can put in rival adventuring parties and stuff. They've already detailed every room for me, so now it's just to throw a bunch of NPCs and stuff. Like, they've done more than half the work for me as a DM. Some of you might be wondering, how good are they? Well, some of them have written books themselves and even worked for Wizards of the Coast. Basically, these guys are experts. They'll help you optimize your words to make fantastic stories you and your players will remember for years. I highly recommend you check them out, and if you do, please press the link in the description. That helps me too. Descript.com slash packtactics. And if you like what you see, they hope to earn your subscription. Use the code packtactics at the checkout to get 10% off your first subscription payment. The remaining feature that doesn't have to do with maneuvers is not crazy. It is know your enemy. Starting at 7th level, if you spend at least one minute observing or interacting with another creature outside combat, you can learn certain information about its capabilities compared to your own. The DM tells you if the creature is your equal, superior, or inferior in regards of two of the following characteristics of your choice. And while you can see the options, personally, I don't think this is enough information. It takes a minute, and you can only use this outside of combat. If I was your DM, I would just let you use this in combat. It would take six seconds, and it would be a bonus action. Why not? 
Well, that was it for all the features, the other ones I already mentioned before. Battle Master Fighter is pretty cool, and is actually a pretty good multiclass for a lot of builds. Just getting 3 levels in Fighter for this subclass gives you Action Surge and some really good maneuvers that you get back on a short rest. I especially like this on my Gloomstalker Ranger, because big damage goes brrrr. Anyways, end of video. Me and Describe hope to earn your subscription. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.